Sure. But we could get started um, and just at least get through some of the initial work that we need to do. So um, first off um, is call to order. So welcome. Today is May 17th. Welcome to the RTD Accountability Committee, Governance Subcommittee. Um, we have uh, hopefully a, a really hearty conversation coming up um, about RTD board structure. So um, we'll get started here. In your packet, there is the meeting minutes from um, our last meeting. So feel free to um, review those. If there are any questions or concerns, let um, me or uh, staff know so that we could make those changes. So um, first up, I just lost my agenda. <laughs> One second. <laughs> I, I got excited and I closed a window. It's okay. All right. So um, really just kicking it off with the RTD board structure conversation. So Tanya, I'm going to hand it off to you and your team. Um, and as people start, you know, coming on, um, we'll catch them up as needed. So feel free to kick it off. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. I'll go ahead and uh, start the screen share. Um, and let me go into presentation mode here so y'all can see fully. All right, can y'all see that well? Yep, looks good. Fantastic. Okay, thanks so much for having us here today. Um, you know, uh, we're going to do brief introductions, quick change up we want to uh, inform you all about. Um, then we will review our um, last discussion open the floor for any follow-up questions that you all may have, and then turn it over to the subcommittee for y'all to figure out you know, what, are, what are the next best steps for you all. Um, so with that, uh, the, the quick, uh, the, the, the um, kind of change up um, we wanted to, to catch you up on here is that, um, you know, I know you all are all familiar with Anna Daniger. She's been with us uh, through the process since the beginning. Uh, it's not typical for us at North Highland to uh, make changes to our project teams. Uh, particularly when we're in the middle of an active engagement, but uh, Anna did get a, a pretty fantastic opportunity. And so she has gone off to other pursuits. We wish her well, but I mean, she has left us in the very capable hands of Chris McCarthy, um, who is our Vice President of Global Transportation at North Island. Um, he's got more than 20 years of experience working in transportation um, and you know, he has a good deal of focus on public policy um, and, and working with government affairs. Um, so he's been brought up to speed and will see us, um, you know, kind of provide the oversight for the rest of the way. Um, so Chris, do you wanna um, say, take a minute and say hello? Well, just so you hear my voice. Yes, you know, again, apologize um, at the very end, having a little change. Uh, Anna, you get opportunities to start a public sector practice with a technology firm. I'm not exactly sure where it is yet, but so it was good for her. So happy to step in. I've now been with North Island for about six years and lead all of our global transportation. Spent a lot of time with MPOs, kind of state, federal, uh, in around kind of the policy of transportation. Led a lot of our work for some of our other big audits of New Jersey Transit, other places, and really will help kind of focus and help you deliver, you know, the product that you need, you know, going into the state legislature uh, next month. So happy to be here and thank you for allowing me to attend. Thanks, Chris. And I also want to recognize uh, Julie Grissett, um, who, um, as you as you heard previously, was the consultant who provided a lot of the the research for that was the foundation of this uh, of this assessment. So we'll get into um, you know what we what we talked about in our in our last meeting. So on May third, we talked about you know what our scope of work was, how we went about that work. Uh, we talked about the peer agencies that we reviewed and, you know, those research areas that we focused in on. Those research areas were really um, pulled um, based on the, the, you know, a review of the mini minutes of, of your all's discussion regarding governance. And then we shared some of the things that were common with RTD um, and their peer agency boards and some of the things wherein um, RTD was a bit unique. Um, we then opened the floor, had some more um, conversation with you all, and we heard a, a few key things that I think are, are really important to, to talk about here. Um, one is that, um, you know, we didn't necessarily hear that there was a clear problem or a clear definition of a problem to be solved. Um, it seemed like there was some interest in understanding 
uh, a little bit more about how other things would could be done, but not necessarily a, a clear problem statement. Um, we also learned that RTD is proactively making some structural changes to their board um, that could have an impact on um, you know, the, how they function and, and what they do and, and how they work. So um, one example that was given um, is that there are smaller committees being established um, that are, will help with um, some of the decision making for the board. And we also learned that you know, there are historical reasons that the current board structure exists in the way that it does. Um, so particularly if you think about you know, the, the finding that RTD was the only um, board where, wherein the members were elected, um, th there is a reason for that. Um, and, you know, at one point in time, I understand they were appointed. Anyway, there's some historical context here that, that was not um, given proper consideration in this, uh, this high-level assessment. Um, and then finally, we heard that, you know, we, we did the comparison of RTD's board size um, using UZA population and um, geographic size, and that perhaps that wasn't sufficient for the comparison. So we'll start with that and say that, um, you know, that was really fantastic feedback. Thank you very much. Agree, um, you know, the UZA um, population is used for federal funding formulas. Um, that does not necessarily um, correlate to uh, the service area and the service size itself. So and we did take a look at, you know, what happens when um, we change this comparison to be service area population and service area square miles. Um, and, you know, what we found is um, our TD's board is a little bit larger than average, 15 um, compared to the average of 11.6. Um, but when comparing our TD member representation for per square mile, only two other properties represent more square, board members represent more square miles. Um, so those, that being UTA um, down in Utah, where they have three board members, keeping in mind that those are full-time board members, um, and then the other being King County Metro. And then we also found then, if you look at the service um, population, you know, RTD falls like right around, you know, uh, somewhere between, you know, down, down like, in the, uh, I'm sorry, let me just restate that. There are six other properties. Um, that have, um, you know, more, more folks represented by each board member. And on average, you know, if you look at the average of 300, you know, roughly 300,000 um, RTDs board members represent about 110,000 less. All that to say, these numbers don't reveal very much, right? Other than to say, hmm, it's really not all that clear um, if the board membership is, is um, you know, relative, is comparable to its peers based on population size and service area square miles. Um, so, so with that, you know, a couple of these were the commonalities um, that we discussed in the last meeting. These have not changed. You know, the, the RTD's term durations are on par with their peers, as is their compensation for their board members. Um, and again, on par with its peers in terms of uh, public transparency and public participation. Um, but, you know, the, these three things are kind of unique across the board. For, uh, peer for peer agencies. Um, again, RTD is unique that board members are elected, um, but board size seems to, you know, kind of doesn't, doesn't really follow a particular pattern when you look at peer agencies. And um, again, if you'll recall from, from the um, preliminary report that, you know, the approaches to regional and sub-regional representation, you know, vary um, and, and all 10 agencies that. So uh, some inconsistencies there. Um, so the suggestion here really is, um, you know, board structure is, is, a, is a pretty big deal, right? Um, you don't want to make significant changes to that um, if there is not necessarily, you know, a, a clear problem or some clear analysis that is done. So, um, so the recommendation is really to, to do some further study and some further analysis. And you'll see three buckets here, each with a question in between. And, and those, those questions sort of Kind of you know guide you to whether or not to take the next step. So first of all, the question is: Is there a problem? Um, and and I think you know from from what we you know kind of garnered through those notes, you know we focused in on on key things that folks um, expressed were of interest. But I don't think there is necessarily a, a clear statement of what of if there is a problem and what that problem is. So kind of getting a better understanding of you know of that and, and defining a problem statement. So, you know, beginning with understanding um, the effectiveness of the board 
and taking into account the full historical context of the board structure. So noting that, you know, there is a reason at one point in time, there was a change. Why did that change occur? Um, is that still relevant today? And then second, or actually third there on the list, um, you know, defining what success really means and taking a look at passports to see if those passports met that success. Um, and then determine based on based on that analysis, is there a problem? And if so, what is the problem? And, and really defining a problem statement. If there is no problem, then the RTD board is effective as it is and, and, the, uh, and the, um, the, the structure should remain intact. Um, but if there is a problem, so answer question one, if the, if the answer to question one is yes, then you move on to, to question two and better assessing the problem. So, you know, really, as, as opposed to a kind of a higher level look, as we did, taking a very deep look um, at RTD's board structure, comparing it with other transit agencies and agencies within the region. So agencies um, within the region that you know who have effective boards um, and how, how do they structure themselves um, and, and how does RTD differ from that? Um, and then also keep in mind um, that RTD, uh, the, the accountability committee here, is going to have some recommendations that may have some implications on the board. So for example, uh, I know there is a draft sub-regional um, committee recommendation that will have a, a implication on the RTD board. So taking into account all of the, of the um, recommendations that may be implemented and understanding how that could have an impact on the board. And then determining if given all of that, does, does, does do the new implemented um, recommendations resolve the problem? Um, and if not, would the would the uh, the region be better served by by a new board structure? And then moving on, if the question if the answer to that question is yes, moving on to defining what that new structure looks like. But I think I, I think ultimately where we land is there's still a lot of questions to be answered before you know kind of giving a, a big a big swipe of here you know here's here's three great ideas on how RTD's board can can be more effective and and first starting at understanding whether or not they're they are effective, you know, are, are, are they working well? Um, and, and, and understanding that that historical context, I think is, is an important, is an important piece of that. So I will, I will pause for, for questions here. Any questions from the group? And if you did see in the packet, there was um, a, a great collection of just history of RTD, which was helpful and then it talks about that 1980 election. Go ahead, Troy. Just for uh, just for the record, um, there are at least two other uh, fairly large transit agencies that do have elected boards. Both, I believe, in California. BART is one of them in the Bay Area, and I think the other one is north of there. Um, and they they were not peer reviewed, and I'm not taking issue with that, Tanya. But I just think it needs to be you know, on the record that there are two others that uh, elect their entire board. Thanks. Noted, thank you. Any other questions for Tanya at this time? Go ahead, Rhett. As, as I recall, one of the concerns going into this in the early discussions was the challenge of a board of 15 people having a conversation and being able to focus on a particular problem and whether you, you know, when, when you have the entire board on every problem, how that impacted things. And, and I know that the RTD board is now uh, creating subcommittees to look at specific issues. And I, I wondered if anyone from RTD's board could comment on how that's working out, Doug or Troy or, or uh, whoever. Yeah, Rut, thanks for the question. And Doug is integral to that process. So I'm sure he would be willing to uh, give a report. And we also have our board chair on, on the meeting as well. So if one of you two would like to jump in, it'd probably be a little uh, more informative than uh, than my knowledge of that situation. 
Uh, thank you, Troy. And you know what I'd like to do is I would like to ask Director Tisdale to kind of do a little synopsis of the work that we've been doing in terms of our committee structure. Director Tisdale. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Happy to do it. Um, <clears throat> I think, as you all know, I'm uh, ready to speak at the drop of a hat. In <laughs> fact, you don't even need the hat. Um, <laughs> But uh, we have had a, uh, a committee uh, going over the issue of board structure, and we have come up with uh, several proposals that we are in the process of submitting to the full board, looking at trying to get the committees down to, for example, there's no decision made, for example, five or seven members as opposed to the full 15 members, and also even trying to reduce the number of committees on the whole. And uh, that process, we hope to have further discussion at our strategic planning retreat to address some of that because it is very important to an efficient board governance process. And we are committed to exploring that. And if I were a betting man, I'd say that we're gonna end up going back to smaller committees, which is the process that we had until about 2007, I think, is when we changed to a committee of the whole structure. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members of the Governance Subcommittee. And, um, and Rhett, I would just add to that, over the last year and a half, we have implemented a series of ad hoc committees dealing with specific issues with the board. This was one of them, but it was one of several. So we are moving in that round. I would bet that we're gonna be going down that same road. Thank you. Good to hear. Thank you. Great. So one of the things that I'm um, actually, Tanya, can you put back on your slides? Um, I think it was like one of the last slides. It talks about you listed out those questions. I think those could be helpful as people just kind of work through those. And, and one is how do you measure board effectiveness? I think was on there yet yeah, define board effectiveness success and efficiency and evaluate past board so I think that is one of the things that I really just am struggling with is determining you know how, how how do you measure board effectiveness and how do you really um kind of I don't know um really put parameters on that is, is something that I'm really struggling with um so I think, and then also just kind of going back at, um, you know, what what problem are we we trying to solve? And I know some of the things that we talked about are, you know, can we, is the committee too large? Is the board, um, are we able to really have people on here who are focusing on regionalism? Um, and so I think that that is, is something that I think we first need to hone down on is, we, we have this great work from Highland, from North Highland, um, great information with us. What, what is it that we um, as a committee would like to kind of dive deeper into and, and really try and, um, you know, peel out of all of this information? Um, as in what direction do you think is most effective here? Um, I do want to just make a note, because <laughs> I know Ron and I had a conversation about this right before everyone jumped on. Um, this, if we need to have another um, meeting, we can, but we do want to definitely wrap things up very quickly here, as in this meeting or potentially another. So um, we do have to get really focused here about how we want to um, engage in this conversation, engage in recommendations specific to this topic. Um, is there anyone on the committee who wants to weigh in here, has insights, thoughts about um, this information from North Island? I have a question, I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Angie. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanna say for the record that the board of directors for RTD had a meeting um, last week and we had a discussion about this and we respectfully were thinking, we'd like to know what problem this would be solving for. So we're right on track with what you're thinking as well. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Great, thank you. Other thoughts from folks who wanna weigh in? 
Go ahead, Jackie. So, I see your hand. Yeah. So, uh, and I think this is a topic that I am particularly interested in, and I think I've probably been more vocal about it. And in my mind, it is just the efficiency of staffing and operating a 15 member board and what it, that entails. I mean, I know uh, having been involved in local government now for over 17 years and been on a variety of boards from my council at a size of five, interacting with commission boards of commissioners that have three to uh, Dr. Cog board, which is certainly <laughs> much larger and the Metro Mayor's Caucus, this breadth of individuals. And obviously the more folks that you have, the more cost there is in staffing those boards and the efficiency of the boards. And, you know, again, it isn't about a particular board. And um, looking back at the historic perspective, it, it to me was interesting. And what I have seen and the information that um, has been prepared leads me to still have that question. Um, the the bo average board size is, uh, is roughly 12. Let's just go with that. Um, and just because that's the average size, I'm not saying we should switch, but I do feel like efficiencies within, in the board um, may be able to be addressed by the subcommittees that are smaller and more nimble. And um, But uh, I feel like we've just scratched the surface. And I, I guess my question and concern, the problem is it's the efficiency of the board. That's the problem in my mind. And, and the staffing associated with staffing a 15 member board and then the other one is just um, having that regional perspective. And I, again, this is not meant to be a commentary on this existing board. It's about having been looking over the shoulders of this organization for 17 years. I, I just think it's a legitimate question that hasn't been answered. And so the recommendation could be um, perhaps a more thorough assessment of, of the 15 member structure. I know the, I, I'm, I subscribe to if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I guess I'm just not sure it's not, it's not broken, but it could it be improved is where I'm sitting and better serve the people at a smaller level. Yeah, I'll go ahead, Ron, jump in. Uh, sorry, Julie, D just did want to point the subcommittee members and, and those in attendance to the agenda packet and um, North Highlands report, which does include kind of gets to Mayor Malay's point. There's not specific recommendations for changes at this point, but at least their suggested recommendation relates to some further investigation to kind of get to these questions. And that's it's laid out in a little bit more detail and narrative form. Um, in the packet on page 11 and 12 of their of their draft report, just so you all have that available and are, can look at that. I think um, the question becomes, who's that, who, who, who would lead that effort? Who's that recommendation to um, uh, kind of post accountability committee life? Yeah, Julie, please. Um, go ahead, Dan. Sorry, I first want to just apologize um, for being a little late. I was working on a grant deadline, so apologies. Um, I, I, guess I just want to express like a, a gut reaction concern, and then um, and then touch on just the recommendation as a whole. I'm a little concerned that at least from the committee, it feels like we're just making a lot of recommendations for more studies, for further studies, further studies, further studies. Um, and just want to acknowledge the amount of time and effort that's gone into this. And the goal was to come out with some sort of outcome. And so I, I just want to acknowledge that. Um, and then I also know RTD is in the midst of multiple different studies. And so including the FAIR study, which is in the operations committee. Um, so I, I guess to Ron's point, um, who's going to do this study? And I guess a question that I have for the committee or something that I, I'd like to offer is, you know, if and when this study is completed as recommended, I mean, is this something that we as an accountability committee would like included within the report um, at some point in the future? I know we are time bound, but just kind of thinking through again, who who is this going to? Is it the RTD board? Is it the governor? Just kind of thinking through a little bit of sequence of events um, and what that might look like. In terms of this recommendation, I mean, 
we are we are time bound, so we're we're running close to time. Uh, we're we're right at time, I should say. So this makes sense as a recommendation moving forward. I acknowledge that. I just want to share my initial concern again that we're just proposing additional studies, additional studies, additional studies. But and Dea, if, if Julie, if you don't, um, Chair, Madam Chair, if you don't mind, I, I think you raise a really good point, particularly since since RTD is in the flux of a whole bunch of other studies, as you said. So there's a part of me that's kind of like, well, let them, I, I don't want to lose it, but I don't think this is the most important thing they should be focused on right now. I think the other work that they're doing and their internal work to maybe improve efficiencies, um, I'd love to see how that turns out if they do go to smaller committees um, before, this is not the most important thing they should be working on right now. However, I do think it's something the organization should be taking a look at. So thank you for raising that. That was sitting with me as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, go ahead, Robert, jump in. Um, I, I, thank you, Madam Chair. The other uh, Madam Chair here, Angie, could you answer a question for me about the ad hoc committees? Because I have seen ad hoc committees be very effective and I've seen them be very ineffective on boards that I've been on. And part of it depends on who's how they're selected and, and how qualified they are to really contribute to whatever that issue is. If you just take the people that want to raise their hand to be on the committee, sometimes you don't get the, the experience and knowledge and depth of knowledge to solve that particular problem. So can you explain how an ad hoc committee is selected? Yes, thank you. Thank you for that question, Rudd. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the safety and security ad hoc committee I put together last year after we began looking at our code of conduct. And we had several board members who said, you know what, I think we need to do more work on this. Um, and so we did put together an ad hoc committee and it included five board members um, who really focused in and around the whole region. So it was uh, Director Williams, who is downtown, myself, who has Union Station, Director um, Chantel Lewis, who has Northeast Denver, but then we also had um, Director Mahalik from the Southeast Corridor, and um, Mr. Whitmore, Director Whitmore from, from the North Corridor, so that we had a pretty good representation on the board. And then we involved um, the Colorado Coalition of the Homeless, the ACLU, um, the Denver Paramedics Department, the um, Chief Pazin from the Denver Police Department, Evan Dreyer from the Mayor's Office, uh, and then we had Aurora's Behavioral Analysis on, on that committee as well. And we did a deep dive into the Code of Conduct um, for quite some time and came up with a new rendition that was really focused on uh, being supportive of, of diverse communities. We took all of that out and made it specific to issues around transit. And from that ad hoc committee, we endorsed the hiring of, of an um, homeless outreach coordinator for mental health clinicians to work in tandem with um, our officers and our security officers. And also another derivative from that was implementing transit ambassadors on the end line so that we're starting to soften up the way that people are seeing security and safety at the transit level. So that's how we did that one. I hope that answers your question. It, it, really, it really gives me a great deal of reassurance that, that you're doing it the right way. And, and uh, the other part I was going to ask is about outside people that you bring yes. in, because a lot of times you don't necessarily have all the right skills. And sounds like you're, sounds like you're pretty much nailing it, Angie. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you for that overview. I think it really helps, and it, it helps to understand that you're bringing in people outside of the organization, too, that, you know, have a lot to, to add to the conversation. So... That's fantastic. Um, now, going back to Daya's point real quickly um, about who would this recommendation be to, like who's our audience, if you will. Um, the way I thought this out in my head, and maybe it's the wrong way, you guys could tell me if I'm right or wrong, but um, I figured that this recommendation would be specific for um, the le legislature and um, specifically for 
I don't know if it would go to faith in that, um, but um, just something for the legislature to continue moving forward, since I think they're the only ones who have the power to change the board in any way, if they wanted to. I mean, um, I at least that is how I was thinking it would go. Does anyone have any other thoughts or ideas about that? If we were to put a recommendation forward, I feel like it wouldn't be to RTD themselves, would it? Or like, if you change the structure of the board, it has to be um, perhaps the power of the legislature, or even the governor, I don't know. Any questions on, the, or any thoughts on that? I mean, I think what you said makes sense, Julie, to me. Yeah, that it mm -hmm. would be. So if we wanted to put forward a recommendation, we could follow the outline that um, North Highland put here, but honestly, um, because we are at, you know, time, um, there would have to be, you know, further investigation, further, you know, just um, a, a look, a deeper dive into board structure and how it goes. And so, I mean, it could be a, a, essentially just like a general recommendation saying, hey, the legislature should consider um, looking at this or the governor should consider looking at this. But um, at this point, I'm not really sure um, what other, what else we could add or change to this recommendation, um, because I feel like we just don't have all of the answers right now, I guess that would be. And I, I agree, Dea. I feel like everything we're doing is saying, hey, kick it down, kick it off to this group, kick it off to this group. And, you know, everyone else continue to look at this issue because we just don't have enough time. But um, I, I definitely understand that. And, and I also agree with you, Jackie, that, you know, out of the multiple things that RTD should be focusing on right now, this is probably definitely um, on the lower end. So I guess my question to this group is, do we want to generate um, a, a soft recommendation on this topic? Um, is this something that we could perhaps highlight in the things on a different scale, as in um, future ideas of study, if you will? Um, or, or how do we feel forward here? I mean, I guess I would frame it as we, uh, there is so much going on within RTD right now. We probably needed to let it settle a little bit. They've got a brand new uh, general manager. They're going through their own internal reimagine process. So, I mean, to me, this is something that should be looked at, I would say, in a year or two, once they kind of get through some of the other, a further, but I don't think it should be lost. So I like the idea of a soft recommendation is that once the new board practices are put into place and that's been functioning for a little while, I mean, they're in the process of doing that now. Um, the general manager, you know, has been there for a little bit longer, may have some ideas or thoughts as she runs that organization on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, I just, so I like, Julie, I like the, what you're suggesting, um, respecting Dea's comments completely about, gosh, we're just saying you need to study more, but I don't think we've got enough information here to make a solid recommendation other than let them get through the processes they're, ha they're underway right now. And then I, we think it does make sense to review the effectiveness of this board structure, not this board, this board structure. Structure. Okay. Yeah. If, if I could just make a quick comment, but I feel like I agree with, um, with Jackie's comments. The other, I guess, thing that I would encourage this committee to do is uh, or to remember is that we're also proposing um, the, I'm going to butcher the name, the like sub-regional right. <laughs> councils. Right. Um, so it almost seems like this recommendation, any sort of recommendation in terms of the board structure should be contingent on whether whether that recommendation is implemented, because yes. that will need an analysis and a relationship between what these, assuming RTD were to implement that recommendation, how does that then affect the board structure and what does that ultimately mean? So it's almost like a domino effect in a way. If that makes sense. Could I yeah. jump in? Go ahead, Elise. I agree with that. I probably would even say it's stronger that um, it, we should say in our 
report that we took a look at this, we decided that it, it was a lower priority and that our other recommendations were, were more important to increase the effectiveness and functionality of RTD and its board if after those recommendations are implemented, hoping that RTD actually implements our recommendations, um, then you, you should assess whether or not there's a problem that needs fixed with board effectiveness, which is a little bit different than saying, then you should do a study. Maybe there's not a problem that needs, that warrants a study. So, so I would probably word it that way. I would also add that my assessment of the board's effectiveness has to do with who gets elected to the board? <laughs> I think the current board's pretty effective. And so therefore the structural issues are eclipsed by the effectiveness of the actual board. So I think the, this is not necessarily in our control, but improving the process of public involvement um, and vetting of, of RTD candidates and public involvement in the election of RTD candidates is probably equally important to the actual structure to make sure you get good engaged board can a board members elected. Yeah, I agree with you, Elise. I think every election, everyone's like, oh, who's up, who's running, who might win? How is this gonna affect the board, right? And so um, it, I think that is just a going to be a constant cycle with this board. Um, but I do like your recommendations of, um, you know, after implementation of the, of, um, the accountability recommendations, then, you know, determine effectiveness or, or language around that, I think that could be really helpful because um, there's a lot of moving parts going on right now, plus all of the recommendations that this committee has gone through. Um, and so as the dust settles, what happens next, I think is, is the next, you know, question or, or at least the timeline for me that, that kind of makes sense. Any Actually, other thoughts or, oh, go ahead, jump in Jackie. No, so I feel like this is more of a free flowing conversation, but the, the, I think it's going for me. I'm particularly interested to understand how the service area councils and the board interaction. Um, so in, it, it, if we make that, you know, if that recommendation does move forward and is implemented, I think that mm -hmm. effectiveness needs to be evaluated. So I don't, I don't, I, I, I tend to agree with pretty much everything Elise said with the exception of I actually do think they should review it. It shouldn't be, they may consider it. I do think you should review effectiveness between the, um, you know, that, that would be my only, okay. yeah, not, not quite as soft as Elise was proposing, but not a full like, yeah, you must do this. It's like, it should be considered and thoughtfully considered and then either decided, yeah, we're good with what we have or now it probably does make sense. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I like that idea. Rhett, jump in here. Yeah, I, I support that in, in terms of whether, I don't think we should say that you should wait and do it later. We should say you should wait and consider whether or not it needs, it needs further study. Uh, I, I will say that there are changes going on right now that address some of the issues that are, were part of the reasons that we originally brought this up. Size of board, lack of subcommittees, everybody together, 15 people trying to make decisions on complex issues. And between the ad hoc committees and this new set of, of standing committees, some of those kinds of issues will be resolved. I think the board is going to have enough, enough of a challenge trying to figure out how these sub-regional councils yep. uh, fit in and, and how to merge that in. I think they need to be left, left to resolve some of these things before before they get put under a microscope again. <laughs> I, I agree, Brett. Okay, so we're talking about more of like a delayed uh, recommendation for action or a delayed um, review. Um, this topic later on, perhaps maybe we'll, that's the language that we go with in, in our, our report with them is then just more of a, I, and again, I don't know who would actually do that delayed review. Um, we won't be here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a little older than you, so that might be a case for me, but you'll still be here most of you. <laughs> In general with the committee, Rhett, don't sign your papers yet, okay? You're sticking with us. 
Um, and so, uh, so yeah, maybe then it goes back to, um, you know, that idea of, you know, is perhaps the legislature can consider or the governor can consider another group or, or, or some type of review of this. Um, I think consider put, like, whether or not to do another review is, is the exactly. important one. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that makes and, sense. And maybe it is something that's kind of an overarching. Uh, I think I would recommend that if yep. RTD moves forward with the rec or with the recommendations from this body, somebody should be evaluating whether or not they worked or they didn't work, and and uh, you know, did this make sense? Has it improved uh, anything or not? And that, mm -hmm. in my mind, should just happen. So I don't know if that's a report back to. Um, if I was down to legislature, I'd be, you know, I would want to know yep. how'd this all turn out, right? And then, and after that review, uh, whether it's a two year, three year, five year, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm thinking three years might make sense once everything's up and running, kind of a review back. And then at that point, they may want to consider some other things, right? Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Jackie. I think actually it makes sense for, um, not just this video, but um, the other recommendations that this, you know, committee has been put together is, you know, in a couple of years, let's look back and see what happened, uh, essentially, and, and what worked, what didn't work, and, and why weren't things implemented, or, you know, any of the above. Um, the, a, a great thing to add to our, our final recommendations report. Yeah. Other thoughts on this topic are we comfortable with moving forward with so just to clarify here we're we're not actually going to have a recommendation on this specific topic it's something that we're going to advise gets reviewed um perhaps that three-year mark or you know something like that um after the other recommendations have been implemented plus all the reimagine and all the additional work that's been going on um, is finished. Is that correct? I would say yes, but I, I don't, I guess to me, this recommendation, it should kind of go in as an appendix to the, this sheet right here as an appendix. Mm -hmm. I think it should be acknowledged is that it is something that we did look at. We don't have enough yeah. information to make it the determination right now. We would suggest that once, once any, uh, formal recommendations are implemented, there be a review process. And at this time, this may be something they want to revisit. Yeah, entirely. Yep, I agree with that 100%. Any other questions, Ron or Doug? I see that you joined us. Any questions you have for this committee for clarifying purposes or thought-provoking questions you'd like to share with us? I was going to let Doug go, but um, no, go ahead, Ron. All right. Um, so I think what I've heard is generally sort of the 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 way that North Highland has laid out this recommendation, the kind of recommendation points, these three things, is is about there, but probably needs to be put into context when when written into the final report, sort of acknowledging the relationship between this potential work happening after RTD implements the sub-regional council piece and how that might affect um, sort of your view on how the board works um, within with that new kind of governance structure. Um, and if RTD doesn't end up um, implementing that recommendation, then probably need to go back and do a more thorough review of the, uh, and, and this analysis than to, to try to address uh, some of the issues. And I think it might be helpful to hear from subcommittee members about what are some of those issues. I've heard Mayor Malay talk about sort of maybe the need for sort of district-wide perspectives rather than, you know, some, some, some level of concern. Again, not about this board, these board members, but overall sort of having district, district level elected board members can lead to some parochialism, some Kind of you know geographic parochialism and maybe having some opportunity for either at-large elected board members or at-large 
appointed board members might be one way to address that. And so I've heard Mayor Malay talk about that issue. So maybe sort of just including in the final report some of those some of those issues that have been raised. Um, not that we have not that y'all have conclusions about them, but to put some context around this recommendation. Well, I know for me, Ron, one of the things I'm really interested in um, looking at is with the sub-regional councils, if they do get implemented, how does that work with the board? Um, and what does that relationship look like? Um, and does that, um, is that a point of, of um, at that point, do we need to like review the process and how it works um, for governance purposes? I'm not quite sure, but that would be one thing I'd be interested um, in seeing play out, I guess. and, and getting a crystal ball and seeing a couple of years from now what happens. Other thoughts from the committee? Okay. Well, if we do have any others, let's reach out to Ron, help him out <laughs> um, to help frame that a little bit more. I think that could be helpful. All right. Any other questions or comments um, from this group? on this topic. So Doug, I think that is this our last governance committee or did we have one more? Ron and I couldn't decide. This is it. I thought this was it. So all right. So governance subcommittee, thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for having these great conversations with us and everyone who joined us throughout this whole process. Um, we really appreciate everyone who invested time and energy um, into all of this work. So final comments for the governance subcommittee as we- Julie, thank you so much for your leadership. It's greatly appreciated. The, the subcommittee chairs really did the heavy lifting and we are grateful. Certainly, speaking as a co-chair that I didn't have to do this work. <laughs> you know, well, you know, it was a lot of fun. So I, I had comment. a great time. Thank yeah. Thanks, Julie, for taking on the extra load to kind of keep us all rolling. And thanks to the Dr. Cog team, too, and North Highland and, um, and, and the board members who were active, engaged partners from RTD with us in these discussions. And, you know, to, particularly this one about somebody trying to come in and have opinions about your board and your board function, we very much appreciate your willingness to, to entertain this and explore this with us. So um, Kudos to the whole group. I want to just say thanks very much. And uh, the wisdom of my fellow, uh, you guys, I learned, I, I continue to learn from all of you. So thanks. No, it's definitely been fun and engaging. And of course, special thanks to um, Dr. Cox staff, RTD staff that have called in on so many of these calls, plus city staff who have silently lingered and joined us in our, in our conversations and our roundtables. I mean, we, we really got a lot of feedback from everybody moving forward. I think we're still gonna be looking for that engagement. Um, and if anything, you know, I'm looking forward to working with all of you guys again. So that is it for me. I'm gonna close out this meeting if we have nothing else. Thank you all and um, more to come. We'll see what this final report looks like. And thank you, everybody. And have a have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Julie. Hey, Bye, everybody. Thank, thank you, Julie. you all very much. Thanks very much for everything. All right. See ya. Bye.